Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Dragon Age Origins. As always, I'm your Owen. Last time, we were talking to Flemeth, Morgan's mother. She had just rescued us from the tower that we had were assigned to protect. Uh, we learned that everyone is dead. Uh, the few survivors are being dragged underground. And uh, Morgan's kind of giving us a pep talk. We should contact the rest of the Grey Wardens. Kaelin already summoned them. They'll come if they can, but... I expect Loghain has already taken steps to stop them. We must assume they won't arrive in time. What is this Archdemon exactly? It is said that long ago, the Maker sent the old gods of the ancient to Winter Imperium to slumber in prisons deep beneath the surface. An Archdemon is an old god awakened and tainted by Darkspawn. Believe that or not, history says it's a fearsome and immortal thing, and only fools ignore history. Will you help us fight this blight, Flemeth? Me? I am just an old woman who lives in the wilds. I know nothing of blights and dark spawn. Well, whatever Loghain's insanity, he obviously thinks the dark spawn are a minor threat. We must warn everyone this isn't the case. And who will believe you? Unless you think to convince this Loghain of his mistake. He just betrayed his own king. If Al Eamon knew what he did at Ostagar, he would be the first to call for his execution. Al Eamon? The Arl of Redcliffe? I suppose. Al Eamon wasn't at Ostagar. He still has all his men. And he was Caelan's uncle. I know him. He's a good man, respected in the landsmen. Of course! We could go to Redcliffe and appeal to him for help. That sounds like an excellent idea. <laughs> Such determination. How intriguing. I still don't know if Arl Eamon's help would be enough. He can't defeat the Darkspawn Horde by himself. Surely there are other of allies. Course. The treaties. Grey Wardens can demand aid from dwarves, elves, mages, and other places. They're obligated to help us during a blight. I may be old, but dwarves, elves, mages, this Arl Eamon, and who knows what else. This sounds like an army to me. So can we do this? Go to Redcliffe and these other places and build an army. Now, he makes a comment about these treaties doing dwarves, elves, mages, and other things. Well, there actually aren't any other things. This is just the three that we have to go and get. Oh, I doubt it will be as easy as that. <laughs> and when is it ever? It's always been the Grey Warden's duty to stand against the Blight. And right now, we're the Grey Wardens. So you are set then, ready to be Grey Wardens. Yes, thank you for everything, Flemeth. No, no, thank you. You are the Grey Wardens here, not I. Now, before you go, there is yet one more thing I can offer. The stew is bubbling, Mother dear. Shall we have two guests for the eve? Or none? The Grey Wardens are leaving shortly, girl. And you will be joining them. Such a shame. What? You heard what? me, girl. The last time I looked, you had ears. <laughs> Thank you, but if Morgan doesn't wish to join us... Her magic will be useful. Even better, she knows the wilds and how to get past the Horde. Have I no say in this? You have been itching to get out of the wilds for years. Here is your chance. As for you, Wardens, consider this repayment for your lives. So it went from, she's giving us Morgan for help, to we are having to take care of Morgan to pay back for our own lives. Very well, we'll take her with us. Not to look a gift horse in the mouth, but... Won't this add to our problems? Out of the wilds, she's an apostate. If you do not wish help from us illegal mages, young man, perhaps I should have left you on that tower. Point taken. Mother, this is not how I wanted this. I'm not even ready. You must be ready. 
Alone, these two must unite for Eldon against the Darkspawn. They need you, Morrigan. Without you, they will surely fail, and all will perish under the Blight. Even I. I... understand. And you, Wardens. Do you understand? I give you that which I value above all in this world. I do this because you must succeed. I understand. Allow me to get my things, if you please. I am at your disposal, Grey Wardens. I suggest a village north of the wilds as our first destination. It is not far, and you will find much you need there. Or, if you prefer, I shall simply be your silent guide. The choice is yours. No, I prefer you speak your mind. <laughs> you will regret saying that. Dear sweet mother, you are so kind to cast me out like this. How fondly I shall remember this moment. Well, I always said, if you want something done, do it yourself. Or hear about it for a decade or two afterwards. <laughs> I just... Do you really want to take her along because her mother says so? We need all the help we can get. We're just two. Three, if you include Killer. The Grey Wardens have always taken allies where they could find... Oh, well, Killer's not with I us. So That's right. I am so pleased to have your approval. Yeah, he is. There he is in the background. Actually, I have some questions. I may have answers. Ask. Mm. What skills do you have exactly? I know a few spells, though I am nowhere near as powerful as Mother. I have also studied history and your Grey Warden treaties. Can you cook? I can cook, yes. Then you can substitute for Alistair. Right, my cooking will kill us. That's all I meant. I also know at least 15 different poisons that grow right here in this marsh. Not that I would suggest it is at all related to cooking. <laughs> Are you really Flemeth's daughter? Twas she who raised me, and thus I consider her my mother, born from her womb or not. It is what you meant, yes? It's just difficult to imagine her... Young, married, pregnant. Who said she was any of these things? I certainly did not. Have you ever been outside the wilds? From time to time. I have been to the village I mentioned, watched its people, and pondered what curious beings they are. On occasion, I purchased goods from the village merchants. There I spoke with men a little. There they stared and knew me as an outsider. Mother wishes for me to expand the horizon of my experience beyond the wilds. Even she was not born here. Is that what you want? What I want is to see mountains. I wish to witness the ocean and step into its waters. I want to experience a city rather than see it in my mind. So, yes, this is what I want. Actually, leaving is harder than I thought, however. Perhaps Mother is right. It must simply be done quickly. Tell me about the village to the north. It is a small place of little consequence called Lothering. No more than a stop along your imperial highway where travelers purchase goods from local farms and smiths. I would go more often were it not for the town's chantry. It makes the village particularly intolerant and unpleasant for a stranger such as me. A chantry? And they never in all this time thought that maybe you were a witch? Of course they have. They even called out their Templars once. They found nothing. Is there any reason to go to Lothering, then? I mention it for its tavern, where travelers gather with news from other places. It is small enough that our appearance might go unnoticed. Beyond that, it is close, and I know the way. How are we going to get past the Darkspawn? The real question is how we are going to get your friend past the Darkspawn, is it not? That's true. We can sense the Darkspawn. Conversely, they can sense us. That's not reassuring. We should be able to sneak past smaller groups, but larger ones, or particularly intelligent Darkspawn, will always detect us. 
Mother has given me something else for them to smell instead as we pass by. Tis important we head out of the wilds, however, not farther in. The Darkspawn are camped farther in the forest? They come from underground, like an eruption. They broke through deep within the forest, and that is where they will be most concentrated. Farewell, Mother. Do not forget the stew on the fire. I would hate to return to a burned-down hut. Oh, tis far more likely you will return to see this entire area, along with my hut, swallowed up by the blight. I... All I meant was... Yes, I know. Do try to have fun, dear. All right, so we got some approval from Alistair Morgan. Uh, I had mentioned the approval earlier. Um, let's look over our first real character. This is uh, Morgan is our mage. She's going to be our mage throughout this entire thing. Uh, she has some interesting abilities, including her prestige class, Shapeshifter. I won't really be using it. Because, uh, well, maybe I can find a way to integrate it in there. I don't know. Maybe we'll figure something out as time goes on. She can shift into a giant spider, which gives grants her the web and the poison spit abilities. Uh, later, she can become a bear, a swarm, or she can then become stronger versions of said things. She starts off with frost weapons, which, as you remember, uh, is similar. Well, is similar to the fire weapons that we had during the tower battle. Winter's Grasp, which is a single targeted ability. Lightning, which is a cone ability. And she also has Mind Blast, which is very handy for mages. Um, I don't think I, I have every mage has this ability, at least. This one specifically. Because what it will do is it will, well, blast everyone away from you. It's a great way to get rid of melee attackers. She also has the vulnerability hex, which uh, reduces um, res elemental resistances in opponents. Disorient, the caster engages some whole mental manipulation. Disorient target for a short time, making them less effective in combat by inflicting a penalties to attack and defense. Something I might do in there. Uh, definitely something I want to try and put on to more tougher opponents. Horror is. No, as you imagine, it's makes them scared. It makes them unable to move unless they pass a check. If the target is already asleep, they cannot resist it, and they will take massive damage. Which is funny, because then the next one is sleep. Um, so that could be an interesting combination right there. And then drain life, kind of self-explanatory. So with that... Let's set up her gambits, the ones that she has now. We do not have, as you can see, we do not really have a lot of space at this moment. So, we are going to set health less than 25, use least powerful health polis. So, if your mana drops below 10%, I want you to use the least powerful mana potion. If you're surrounded, actually put that first, if you're surrounded. Now, I think for right now, our best bet is going to be um, having her use the vulnerability hex. And then I'm going to have her stick with frost weapons. And hopefully that'll just keep it on at all times. See, our uh, killer is all icy now. So without further ado, let's uh, check out the world map. Uh, you did notice there were a bunch of quests that popped up. Um, those are simply telling us that we can go and explore these various areas. We can go to the party camp, which is where all of us, we can do most of our talking with the rest of our party. It is also where I tend to do all my preparations for every chapter. So once we get done with Lothering here, uh, you will see me jumping back and forth to the party camp quite a bit. 
we can go to, after there, we go to the Brazilian outskirts, which is where we can meet up with the elves. We have Denerim, which is where the capital is. This is kind of where the culmination of the story is going to end. We have the, whoops, the Frostback Mountains, which is where we're going to be kidding another one of our characters, a dwarf. And then we have Redcliffe, which is where the Arl is that we needed to go see. And then, of course, the Circle Tower, Circle of Mages. But before we do any of this, we're going to go get our second party member and continue on with the story in Lotharain. Now, normally between here and Lotharain, there would be a cutscene or a side battle, a random encounter, as you will. Um, and you would then get, if you helped, if you did, in fact, heal the Mobari Hounds with the flowers, uh, you would then get a Mobari Hound here, between, like I said, between um, Flemish House and Lothering. Meanwhile, in Denerim. And I expect each of you to supply these men. We must rebuild what was lost at Ostagar, and quickly. There are those who would take advantage of our weakened state if we let them. We must defeat this Darkspawn incursion, but we must do so sensibly and without hesitation. Your Lordship, if I might speak. You have declared yourself Queen Anora's regent, and claim we must unite under your banner for our own good. But what of the army lost at Ostagar? Your withdrawal was most fortuitous. Everything I have done has been to secure Ferelden's independence. I have not shirked my duty to the throne, and neither will any of you. The Banorn will not bow to you simply because you demand it. Understand this. I will brook no threat to this nation from you or anyone. If you didn't like Loghain already, there's another reason to. Van Teethen, please! Your Majesty, your father risks civil war. If Eamon were here... Van Teethen, my father is doing what is best. Did he also do what was best for your husband, Your Majesty? Dun dun dun. Wake up, gentlemen. More travelers to attend to. I guess that fellow is the leader. They don't look much like their mothers, you know. Uh, maybe we should just let these ones pass. Nonsense. Greetings, travelers. Highwaymen, preying on those fleeing the darkspawn, I suppose. They are fools to get in our way. I say, teach them a lesson. Now, is that any way to greet someone? A simple ten silvers and you're free to move on. Your toll collectors, then. Indeed, for the upkeep of the Imperial Highway. Bit of a mess, isn't it? You're fixing the highway? Uh, I don't think so. Not much gets past you, I see. It's not really a toll. We're just <sighs> robbing you. See? Do shut up. Even a genlock would have understood that. Forget it. I'm not well, paying. I can't say I'm pleased to hear that. We have rules, you know. Right. We get to ransack your corpse, then. Those are the rules. Do you really want to fight a Grey Warden? Did he say he's a Grey Warden? Them ones killed the king. Greatest of Ferelden, I hear. Turn Logan put quite a bounty on any who are found. Wait, what? But aren't them Grey Wardens good? I mean, really good. Good enough to kill a king. You have a point. Well, let's forget about the toll. We'll just leave you to your darkspawn fighting, king-killing ways. You know, the Grey Wardens could use a donation. You don't say. He's really good, boss. Remember, 
Well, yes. Twenty silvers? That's all we've collected today. Excellent donation. Thank you. Yeah, then take it. Uh, do enjoy your stay in Lothering and all that. Now, you could have fought them, and there are various things you could have looted from their corpses, and... Enemies approaching. Oh, apparently that <laughs> causes um, them to attack. Stabby, stabby, stabby. So, we are... Now, you notice the little spot there? Most excellent. All right, we surrender. We're just trying to get by before the dog spawn gets us all. That little symbol showed who was at a hex. You picked the wrong target. Yes, yes, of course. We should have been more careful. I'm sorry. Hand over everything you've stolen. Yes, yes of course. The coins we've collected are right here. Uh, just over a hundred silvers. A gold piece. The rest is in the chest we brought. I swear. And start running and don't come Listen, back. The dark spawn can have this place. So apparently, if you try and rob them, they uh, they don't very much like that idea, and we'll attack you anyway. But we have one last cutscene, and this will probably be the end of this episode, and probably be the end of this session, so let's get this out of the way. I'm getting tired. It's kind of late here. Well, there it is. Lothering. Pretty as a painting. Ah, so you have finally decided to rejoin us, have you? Falling on your blade in grief seems like too much trouble, I take it. Is my being upset so hard to understand? Have you never lost someone important to you? Just what would you do if your mother died? Before or after I stopped laughing. Right, very creepy. Forget I asked. What do you want to talk about, Alistair? His navel, I suspect. He certainly has been <laughs> contemplating it for long enough. Oh, I get it. This is the part where we're shocked to discover how you've never had a friend your entire life. I can be friendly when I desire to. Alas, desiring to be more intelligent does not make it so. Anyway, I thought we should talk about where we intend to go first. I need to look for Fergus. He still might still he be was alive. scouting in the wilds, wasn't he? That's what the king said. Then attempting to look for him there would be foolish. He is either dead or he managed to flee to the north. Very sensitive. I am simply saying that it is foolish to mount a rescue when you have no notion where this man is and the wilds are overrun with darkspawn. You will either find him somewhere outside the wilds with other survivors or not at all. Great. Uh, we should try to use these treaties, I, I assume. Have you looked at them? Uh, yes. There are three main groups that we have treaties for. The Dalish Elves, the Dwarves of Orzammar, and the Circle of Magi. I also still think that Arleman is our best bet for help. We might even want to go to him first. Then we need to find these people. I can give you directions, if you like. I don't need any more directions. Then you have a plan. What do you think we should do, Morgan? Go after your enemy directly. Find this man, Loghain, and kill him. The rest of this business with the treaties can then be done in safety. Yes, he certainly wouldn't see that coming. And it's not like he has the advantage of an army and experience and... I was asked for my opinion and I gave it. If your wish is to come up with reasons why something cannot be done, we will stand here until the Darkspawn are upon us. Why are you leaving that up oh, to me? I don't know where we should go. I'll do whatever you decide. Now that is unsurprising. Aliman is a good man, but I don't know for sure he's where we should go. I'm not going to fight about it. Is there any way to contact the Grey Wardens? Short of leaving Ferelden to seek them out, the only place to send word to would be Weisalpt Fortress. And that's thousands of miles away. Oh, well, I guess I'm ready to get going. Fair enough. Let's head into the village whenever you're ready. All right. 
Um, I don't know if this is going to catch. Okay. I'm going to pause the game there. Um, because there's a little interaction between those two that I really want to catch on camera. Thank you guys so, so, so very much for watching. Um, next time we will uh, check out Lothering here and we will uh, get some supplies, get our second party member here, and then uh, do some side missions, you know, figure out, fiddle everything out. And then we will head off to Orzammar and deal with the dwarves first. Yay! So, uh, thank you guys so, so, so very much for watching. As always, I'm your Rowan. Sorry for this one was kind of a shorter episode. I'm getting kind of tired. Really shouldn't stop recording everything so long, but... Anyway, long outros are long. Happy gaming, guys. Thank <laughs> you.